This video will just give you a quick introduction to the Audacity interface. So I'm just going to take you through how Audacity works in a basic way and show you how to make your first recording. So let's look at the interface first. We've got, uh, top left, we've got what looks like a sort of traditional tape player, I guess. You've got a pause button, you've got a play button, you've got a stop button, you've got a skip to the start and a skip to the end, and you've got a big red record button as well. Uh, so these control the general um, playing, recording, shuffling about of audio files. Beside that, you have a few tools here. We won't look at them just now, don't worry. Uh, we'll go into them in later videos. And some other stuff over here which looks at the levels. So that's how loud, basically, uh, things are coming into Audacity and audio is going out of Audacity. Uh, then you've got a couple of volume controllers down here. So you can control the speaker volume. So that's what uh, volume uh, the audio will come out of Audacity. And this is your recording volume. So that's why it's got a little microphone icon next to it. Because that's how you record how loud your input is. So that uh, sets how loud you want to record. Then you've got a whole bunch of other buttons here. We'll go through that in later videos as well. Uh, and then importantly we have two selectors here which select what you're recording and what you're playing out through. So the one on the left uh, chooses where you're outputting your audio. So at the moment it's set to my normal speakers uh, which actually is my headphones. So that's Microsoft Light Chat uh, headphones I'm wearing right now. You can also choose um, this Realtek High Definition, so that would be my actual speakers, so I could output directly to my real speakers. Or you have Microsoft Sound Mapper, which is a software um, tool for outputting sound, and that would be for some more advanced uses, which we might look at later on. On the input side, probably the more important one, this is how you're recording into Audacity. And we've got a few choices here. Again, we've got the Sound Mapper, so that's a software one but we have two microphones attached to this computer. There's my headset microphone, so Microsoft Live Chat, so that's a USB microphone I have plugged in just now, and this Realtek High Definition, that is the internal microphone for the computer that I'm recording on. But say you had another microphone plugged in uh, via USB, it would also appear in this list, or if you had another microphone plugged in via the microphone port on the side of the computer, that would also appear here. So you've got a range of choices depending on what you want to record and how you want to record it. Next you've got how you want to record, so this would be mono or stereo. At the moment my microphone is just mono, so that's all I can choose. And generally that's probably a good idea um, when you're recording just voice for a podcast. So let's do a quick recording just to show you how it works. So all I'm going to do is hit the big red button and then start speaking. And you can see that this shows the levels of my voice. So that shows how loud my voice is coming in. So if I stop speaking for a moment, you can see that that dropped right down and then it picked up again when I start speaking again. And you can see also that in the middle of the screen, a sound wave is appearing. So this is the live recording of my voice as I'm speaking. It shuttles along at the top, it shows you where the playhead is, it shows you what's been recorded already, and it shows you the time that you're on. So this is counting up in seconds, and that'll change into minutes as soon as it gets a little bit longer. So uh, that's pretty much all you need to know for recording for the moment. So if I just hit stop now, and that's it stopped recording. You can see we've recorded just over 45 seconds worth of audio. Now you've got a scroll bar at the bottom here that lets me scroll back along to the start. So that's how you can shuttle around the audio recording. You've also got zoom buttons up here, which are worth looking at now. They look like a magnifying glass with a plus in and a magnifying glass with a minus in. Now remember you can always hover over a button to find out what it does. These little tooltips pop up. You see that zoom in that's popped up there and the zoom out. So if I zoom out, you can see we can get the whole audio recording on one screen. Let's zoom back in a little bit again. Now just to give you an idea of what this sound wave means, it basically measures volume. So these bits here, that bit that I've selected there, that's just a flat line. That means there's no volume there. So that's probably when I paused speaking for a minute. Whereas this part here, that's 
uh, a lot more fuzzy. The, the peaks are much higher up and much lower down and therefore that shows that that's where I was speaking. So there's a bit of volume there. So it makes it a bit easier to find um, points where you're when you're editing because you know that this is silence and then this is speaking. So just so that you know exactly what's represented here. So let's have a look at how the timeline works. So this is what I call the timeline. That is your audio recording and then you've got the uh, the ruler at the top here which shows the time which you're actually recording at. So if I click on the audio recording at the 3, you'll see a line appears there and that shows that you've selected a point at the 3 second mark. You can go along, you can select 6 second mark or the 4 second mark and that puts the playhead at that point. Now if I press play, it starts playing from that point on the recording. So if you want to scroll through, you want to see what is playing at say the 15 second mark, you click on the timeline there and then press play. And actually a shortcut to that is that you can click straight on the timeline at the top here. So if I click on 18, then that actually started there and started playing there. Click on the same at 21 and it starts playing there. You can also select points on the audio recording by clicking there and then dragging out. If I click once it puts the marker there and then you can see that if I hover over that it turns into a little pointer. So if I click again I can drag out from there. Or of course I can just click and drag directly and that lets me highlight a part of the recording. And this is useful for selecting certain parts of the recording to operate on whether it's cutting stuff out, whether it's making it louder, quieter or any of those type of operations. The last thing to just quickly look at are the recording, sorry, the play and other controls up at the top left here. Let's hit the skip back and that goes right back to the start of the recording. If I click the skip forward, that goes right to the end of the recording. Now, when you've got more than one clip in here, it'll actually clip, uh, skip from the start of the clip to the end of the clip and then go on to the next clips in sequence. Let's go back to the start now though. Press play. You've obviously got the pause button. You probably know fine what that does. Press pause, it stops playing. And then if I press play again, it starts playing again. And then stop stops it. And that's pretty much all the basic controls that you need um, for moving around an audio recording. We've not looked at editing yet, but we'll do that in the next video. But that gives you an insight into how the Audacity interface works. So good luck with your recording and thanks for watching.